Good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning. Grab your Bible, grab your favorite morning beverage, because we're going to dive into John chapter 15. We've been looking at Jesus as the vine this week, looking at John 15, where Jesus tells us that he is the vine and we are the branches. And we've been learning about what it means to abide in Christ. That's part of being a Christ follower. It's abiding, which means remaining, staying close, making our home in Christ. And so we're going to continue this discussion today by looking at what Jesus says is the mark of a disciple. And specifically, he says that the mark of a disciple is love. So let's look. John 15, starting at verse 12. Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Now remember, this conversation is taking place as Jesus is walking with his disciples, we think, from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane. I imagine it's a beautiful evening. The full moon is out. It's the season of Passover. He's been teaching them many things about abiding by looking at the vineyards that they're passing, looking at the grapes, talking about spiritual fruit, talking about the branches remaining in the vine in order to produce spiritual fruit. He's preparing them for his departure. And he is teaching them that it's going to be as they remain in him through abiding that he will enable them to love each other sacrificially. Now, this sacrificial love is commanded by God. It's not a feeling, it's not an emotion, but it's a love that focuses on the ultimate good of the other person. It's a love like Jesus's love. It's a love that lays down his life for a friend, which is what Jesus is preparing to do. He is getting ready to lay down his life for his friends. He says in verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. What a beautiful definition of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, he's Lord. Yes, he's Savior. Yes, he's King. But he is friend. And friend is a new descriptive term for the disciples. This was new to them. The Greek word that he uses here actually means the inner circle of the king. Can you imagine? You and I are invited into the inner circle of the king. You know, the friend of the king is close to him. The friend of the king knows his secrets. He is subject to him. He must obey him. And yet he is privileged and protected by him. And in the same way, Jesus is revealing his inner secrets to the disciples. He's been preparing them for his departure. He knows that he's going to the cross, that he's going to the grave, that he's going to be resurrected and ascended. He's going to be leaving them. He's been revealing to them truth about the Father. He's been teaching them about the Holy Spirit that he's going to send to them after he ascends into heaven. He's been talking to them about this new relationship that he that they are going to have with him once he is is ascended. He's going to he's been talking to them about their mission in the world after their departure. They have been receiving the inside scoop because they are his friends. And soon as they're headed to the garden, he's going to be inviting them to pray for him while he's in the garden, while he's preparing his heart for the cross. So to be in the inner circle of Jesus is to be loved by him, and it's to love Jesus in return. And that love involves respect, it involves listening to him, and it involves obeying his instructions. The true test of friendship with Jesus is the willingness to be obedient to his commands. Do you know that? That obedience is a response of love. Jesus goes on at some point, and talks to us about what it means to take up our cross. And, you know, while there are many blessings and benefits to abiding with Jesus, let's be honest, there are also some costs, right? This is why Jesus speaks to his disciples about taking up their cross to follow him. We see this in Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 and 25, when Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What does that mean? You know, you've heard this term, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. To deny self, it doesn't actually mean to deny things. It actually means to give ourselves wholly to Christ, which is the very opposite of self-seeking. 
self-seeking is the essence of sin since the very beginning when when satan was self-seeking satan's downfall was that he wanted to replace god on the throne he wanted to rule the universe himself the ultimate example of self-seeking is satan to deny self actually means to refuse to think of yourself as a righteous person because of all of your good and unselfish acts. The Bible tells us that, that all of our acts are like filthy rags in God's sight. So tonight, to deny self is to recognize that without Christ carrying your sins and mine to the cross and dying in our place, we would have no hope of meriting favor with God. To take up the cross means to identify with Christ in his rejection, his shame, and suffering and death. It is not just about saying no to self, it's about saying yes to God. You know, Galatians 2.20 says that, um, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So when we abide in Christ, it will involve taking up our cross, laying down our lives to follow him. It also may involve suffering and hardship, but there is always an accompanying promise of answered prayer and spiritual fruitfulness. In John 16, 16 through 17, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. So interesting that once again, Jesus is reminding us that one of the greatest blessings of being a fruit bearer is the promise of answered prayer. That, that there is something very significant about your life and mine glorifying God by the spiritual fruit that we bear and the relationship that we share with God in prayer. In this prayer and promise are always linked together in scripture. Prayer is not a way of getting God to do what, what you want him to do, or what I want him to do. Rather, it is asking him to do what he's already promised to do. You know, when we pray according to his promises and, and he promises to glorify himself through our prayers, then answered prayer is always a glorification of God. You know, one of the ways that we can love one another is to lift each other up in prayer. Are you doing that? Are you having the blessing of praying for other people? What kind of impact could you make on your community of people by just genuinely loving and praying for one another? How might the culture of our churches be impacted by a community of people who sincerely pray for each other, who lift up each other's needs, who encourage each other rather than criticize? What if our communities were truly fragrant aromas of Christ in this world? What kind of, of beautiful influence would that have on our culture? You know, the truth is that the love for one another is what characterizes fruitful disciples. You know, we talked yesterday that when we abide in Christ, spiritual fruit is guaranteed. It's just a natural law that when we abide, there will be fruit and love is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And Jesus is reminding us that when we love one another, that is a characteristic of a fruitful disciple. Fruitful disciples are known by their love for one another. Let me ask you, how might the fruits of the Spirit in your life be demonstrated as an expression of Christ's love for another person? You know, maybe kindness towards someone or goodness or patience. You know, we're in a season right now where your patience might really be tested. How might your ability to love another person be manifest in a spirit empowered patience? You know, how are you exhibiting love for other people in prayer? You know, lifting other people up. True love will compel you to sincerely pray for others as your heart breaks for what breaks theirs. Who might you encourage today? Uh, with a note, with a phone call, with a text, with a card, um, with an invitation to safely walk at a distance. Where is God leading you to love others by serving Him? How can you serve Him and in the process love others? You know, all of these characteristics of a dis are, are all of these are characteristics of a disciple who abides in Christ and who through intimacy of prayer and with the word, 
then respond by taking action when the Holy Spirit prompts. You know, the beautiful thing about abiding in Christ is there's this relationship between intimacy and action. It says, as we draw near to God in intimacy through his word, through prayer, through the Holy Spirit, experiencing the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, it then manifests itself into action as we love other people the way Christ loves us. You know, I was thinking, is there anything more important for us to do during this season of waiting, the season of, of isolation and of global pandemic, than to uh, practice abiding in Christ, to really draw near to Him? What opportunities might you have right now to draw near to Him in prayer, to cultivate a relationship of intimacy and dependence? What opportunities do you have to follow His leading in truth and obedience? What opportunities do you have right in your home or in your neighborhood to faithfully lead others to know him as you use your gifts to strengthen the people around you in their faith? I'm going to pray about our day today. Father, we come before you and ask that you would lead us today, that you would guide us, that you would direct our path, that you would show us who we need to love with the love that you've already poured into our hearts for that person. Who do we need to pray for? Who do we need to reach out to? How do we need to be an encouragement to someone today? Lord, would you show us that you are alive and active, even in the season of waiting, and that there is much that we can do to love other people well um, as we wait for this pandemic to be finished. And oh, Lord, we pray that you would quickly bring a cure, that you quickly heal our planet. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day.